we've seen before that the elements of a set can just be about anything. They could be numbers, they could be fruit, they could be functions, they could be other sets. So what we're going to consider is a particular type of element which I'm going to refer to as ordered pairs. So my notation is this sort of bracket where I put a first element and then a comma and a second element. And what I'm thinking about here is that this pair is one where, where order matters. You might remember that when we were talking about sets, the order didn't matter for a set, right? That the set that contained the element 1 and 2 was the same thing as the set that contained the element 2 and 1. And I used squiggly brackets to denote sets. For ordered pairs, we're saying, look, I want to have two elements, say 1 and 2, but, but I want to have the, the first one of them is specified and the second of them is also going to be specified. And then I have a sort of a notion of a quality of ordered pairs. It's kind of a, an obvious one. It's to say that the ordered pairs are going to be equal if it has the property that the first two components are equal and it has the property that the second two components are equal. So in other words, we're saying AB is equal to CD if the first two components, that's the A and the C, those are equal and the second of the two components, the B and the D, that those are going to be equal. Now this might seem like kind of like a, like a trivial, like duh, that should be the appropriate thing, but we're going to see later on in this course that there's going to be all sorts of weird mathematical objects and notions of equality can be all sorts of weird and bizarre things. So we're just going to set the standard that whenever we come up with some new mathematical object, we're going to tell you what does it mean for that mathematical object to be equal. And in this case, it's the obvious thing that you would expect. They just look the same in the first component and in the second component. It also should be noted that the A and the B here, they could come from entirely different sets. Uh, like I could consider, for instance, a pair that was like three apple. Because the first element is just a number. It comes from the set of, say, integers. And that the second element could come from the set of, say, fruit. So there's no restrictions here that these two different things look at all alike. We just need to be able to say that there's, there's one set that the first component comes from and some other set that the second component comes from. So now what I want to do is I want to consider a set whose elements are going to be made up of these ordered pairs. In other words, uh, the individual elements inside of your set are not a number like one, two, or three. The individual elements inside of your set are each themselves ordered pairs. And we can refer to the Cartesian product, which is this sort of fancy name, and it has this sort of fancy notation A cross B, that's the Cartesian product. And this is going to be the set is, that is all possible ordered pairs A comma B. You have a, a set for the first component specified, that's your big A. And so all of the, the individual elements little a all come from this big A. And then you also have a second set for the second component, a big B, and all of the different elements, little b, inside of your order pairs come from this particular set B. And then the Cartesian product is going to be the set whose elements are all of these different things. Now, we have seen uh, a Cartesian product before. This is going to be the Cartesian plane. So we've seen a familiar uh, this is the x, y plane, and we might refer to a point, like for example, this one here, I will put some markers in here, I would write this as 2 comma 1. And what I am meaning here is an ordered pair where the first component tells me the x-coordinate, and the second component is going to tell me the height. So this 2 comma 1, well, this is an ordered pair, and I'm going to say that it is an element, I use my element symbol, of a particular cross product, the, the cross product of the horizontal line, all of the x values, with all of the y values. And, and I denote the real numbers by this r that's got two different lines here. So this is the real numbers for the x component crossed the real numbers, again, it's the same set, the A and the B are the same set here, cross another copy of the real numbers for the Y component. And then if I ask what R cross R is itself, well, that's going to be the Cartesian product, but it, what it represents is the entire 
real plane or the entire Cartesian plane. In other words, the Cartesian plane is going to be every possible pairing where I tell you the x-coordinate and then I tell you the y-coordinate. In this example, we have the Cartesian product between two very small sets. So for instance, first of all I'm going to have this set which is the pairs a comma b, so I'm going to call this the set a. And then I am crossing this with some other set that I'm going to refer to b, and, and b here is just the set that contains either 0 or 1. So both a and b, they only contain two different elements, but the two different elements are different ones. They're, they're letters in the case of big A, and they're numbers in the case of big B. So if I want to try to figure out what this is going to be, I want to write it as some set, and I'm going to leave myself like quite a bit of space here because we're going to fill it in. If I want to write this out as some big set, I want to write out all of the different pairs that are going to be in here. That's what a Cartesian product is, all of the different ordered pairs. So I want to think about all of the ways where I can take one element from the big A and one element from the big B. Well, one thing that I could do is I could look at, well, how about little a1? That's a possibility, right? That's choosing my little a is one of the elements here, and then my one is one of the elements over there. So that's perfectly fine. But I've got other possibilities. I also could choose a and zero. I also could choose things that have b at the front of it. I could choose b and one, and I could choose b and zero. So what I've got in here is this list of four different elements, and that forms my cross product. Every element in my cross product is an ordered pair, and because it's only two and two for the different sizes, there's only going to be the four possible ways that I can combine them. And so I'm going to say that this is my Cartesian product. 